I am no longer alone in predicting blackouts for the UK or brownouts which are rationing by area or by other means power uh, in our electricity grid. And um, at the moment, because I'm working in the College of Advanced UK, a political party I now am totally in bed with and support as the best possible future for the UK, I uh, started to have to look at policies um, going forward, realising that probably for the next four years we can't do a thing, but we can develop those policies. In doing that, um, the question comes, how do we escape the madness of Ed Miliband's world? We're, we're going to end up with a blackout. We're going to end up with a very poor electricity grid because of two major things. One is the balancing of the energy to the demand, and the other one is, of course, the inertia to keep the, the frequency correct. And um, having looked forward, one aspect is, what's the fastest way of escaping this madness? Now, apparently, gas turbine engines are becoming very popular in the world, and there's an eight-year wait, or something like that, for new gas turbines. And they're a bit like jet engines, really. <laughs> Uh, and those are becoming very popular as the world's waking up to all this green nonsense doesn't work. And it certainly is. When people are dropping net zero left, right and centre. But not here in the UK. We have to be the perfect virtue signalling one. And in fact, um, Theresa May, in her virtue signalling world, uh, got rid of our coal power stations. I mean, she blew them up, basically. Uh, Germany didn't do that. Germany actually... Uh, mothball them and actually has relatively built new ones from about 2018 and um, so basing my work on Germany's um, coal power stations they now take about 20% or so uh, of their energy comes from coal and sometimes up to 32-34% of peak times comes from coal so um, taking that as an example and the nice um, scrubbed emissions, which are you know very little harmful, very or not harmful, um, I, I prepared a paper. Now, my way of doing things these days, as many of you will know, is to do all the detail into a paper. And there's a paper below this video. It's here. And that paper explains in detail um, what the effect of um, introducing coal back as a source of energy for our grid would be in the UK. Uh, and I live in Wales, no secret about that, and obviously Wales is one of the, just one of the major areas for coal. It was part of the Industrial Revolution. And um, so this paper um, I prepared highlights the fact that um, coal is totally viable in the future. The one thing it does do, uh, and we're not worried about the toxins there, they're, the sulfates and that, they're very low now with new coal power plants. But what it does do is it produces about four times, three or four times the carbon emissions of gas, which is great because uh, we're going to have uh, How Green Is My Valley again back in Wales, if you like. So, because uh, that's bland food. And I'm not worried about that. So, in fact, I encourage more CO2 because I think it's beneficial to the environment. And therefore, um, based on this paper, right at the beginning, uh, I, I, I do a summary table, and it's here. Now, this table compares the cost. Without any carbon taxes, I remove all carbon taxes from what we were getting from coal with imported coal, the top line there, then coal with our domestically produced coal, which is more expensive because we do a lot of deep mining to get it, with the gas supply, CCGT gas plants, with offshore wind, with uh, floating wind, onshore wind, solar, tidal um, wave and biomass. And you can see the costs there. Now the first column is the straightforward cost per megawatt hour coming out of those systems. And that's based on the latest figures um, that Ed Miliband's using. So I've taken his figures. And then the system costs, what are they? Well. With gas and coal, you have a spinning flywheel as part of the turbine, and you do not need inertia. With gas and coal, you don't have the constraint payments. That's where we pay people to switch off when we can't use electricity, and we still have to pay them. And we don't have the effect of the intermittent 
nature of renewables on the gas supply, meaning it's got to turn down, turn up fast. It's got to do all this very rapid balancing, um, which it would normally do. And it's got to have less percentage use of the grid over time, um, but the same overheads, basically. And because of that, it loads on to um, the electricity costs quite a lot, actually. So allowing for those factors, um, we have to add the system cost to give the final total there. And this is in pounds per megawatt hour. These are wholesale prices. And you can see how um, they all compare. So let's start off there. Well, what's the cheapest? Um, coal imported is the cheapest at about £57. Um, if we mine our own coal, it's £64. It's more expensive. What we have to take into account, though, if you think moralistically about this, is, is the fact that we mining our own coal, we'd have um, a lot more em employment, uh, good, good jobs, uh, um, a bigger tax yield, and so on. So uh, it isn't as simple as just looking at the coal figures. And then the gas, uh, the gas which is coming in at about £62, and then we've got offshore wind. Well, offshore wind is more than double that, 147 to 167. And as we go down there, you can see the absurdity of some of them. And there we are with floating offshore, about six times the price of um, gas or coal. So actually, the best way to show you this is a histogram. Let me show you a histogram of these prices against the different types of energy. And as you can see here, the fossil fuel ones here are far cheaper, far less expensive than all the renewables here. And I've taken the midpoint of the renewables because they all have a range. So I've taken the midpoint for those, not the highest. Now, if you look at how we fear internationally our prices here, if you take energy prices in China, for example, the Shinoa group here average approximately £42 a megawatt hour to buy it in. So industry's getting it about £42 a megawatt hour. How much is the UK? Around about £280 a megawatt hour we buy in at. Well, so let's look at America now. Well, of course, energy prices vary from state to state, but I've taken a coal-heavy region in Wyoming and North Dakota, and that is covered by the Southwest Power Pool, or SPP market. And the average cost for them producing it is about £22 per megawatt hour. And they sell it on as a profit, of course, on top of that. But obviously we can't compete. So now I've exposed the ridiculous cost differences between our energy. And, you know, it's in rough terms. It's changing all the time. So what does not change is we are many times the price of overseas, of some competitors, our main competitors even. And we are the highest industrial electricity prices in the developed world. That is not a basis for prosperity. And it affects every single person. It affects how many industries we have, how much employment we have, how we grow as an economy in every way. But you're constantly being told, well, you're constantly being deceived by this man here. This man is deceiving you all the time. And what he's telling you is we can't be subject to fossil fuel prices. We can't be subject to gas prices setting it all the time. This is wrong. So I'm now going to explain very simply the deception here. And it is total deception. Now these are the monthly gas prices um, since uh, 2015 to 2025, the last 10 years for the UK. And they've been adjusted to 2015 prices. So you're comparing like with like. And as you can see here, uh, we had the COVID um, recession, we'll call it. The demand really dropped and prices really got low for a lot of fossil fuels then. And then it started to recover. And then we had this Ukraine peak here, totally down to Ukraine that. And the um, having to find new sources and so on, it caused an incredible increase in price. And then it dropped again and... Today, it's at this level just here. What you should note is the level here today is actually slightly less than it was in 2018, right? So the idea that today we're paying more uh, than we were before the Ukraine crisis is wrong. But the situation is even worse than that. So let me explain more. 
This is a graph of the predicted gas prices from today forwards. Here is 2030 and here is 2040. And as you can see, it drops. In other words, the forecasting a gas price drop every year between now and 2030 and then levelling out so that they are lower than today for a long time to come, for decades to come. So whose predictions are these? Well, they're, they're predictions of Nesso. And who's Nesso? What organisation is that? It's the one that Ed Miliband controls. As Secretary of State, the Secretary of State has a 75% shareholding in Nesso, and it's that organisation that works for Miliband in effect. But you'll have heard Miliband explaining time and time again that the prices of energy are set by gas every day and it's gas that's doing all this problem. Complete deception, of course, because this is how the market works each day. Basically, the price is set by gas and let's say gas comes up and say, let's say it's £72. So the price of electricity that day is £72. Now the wind farm comes along uh, and it'll, it'll get paid £72. But that's not enough for the wind farm because its contract says it needs to be paid, say, 115. So the government have to make it up. So the price of gas has no effect whatsoever on the price of wind power or solar power or biofuel because they're all on contracts. Now, going back to that chart there with the original chart with the uh, price of biofuel, please note Drax, and that's what we're talking about here, that's what it's being paid for biofuel. Um, and I haven't added the adjustments into Drax because it's already got the inertia, etc. So it hasn't got the same constraints. It is what we call dispatchable on demand supply. So, but that is charging more than twice as much for the power than it used to, than it charged when it used to be a coal power station. And that's allowing for inflation and everything. So it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. We cut down forests in America and Canada and places. Um, we have all the work of doing that. We put them into big sheds where the wood's heated and palletized and transported by trucks and trains and ships till it gets to a train station on the coast, the east coast, by tracks, shipped across by train a couple of miles and into the um, track station. That's a lot of CO2 by the way. And then, of course, when it's burnt, it gives off more CO2 than coal. I mean, it's madness personified, but that's part of the world we live in, I'm afraid. I've digressed there, I know, but I'm just showing the madness of all this. So do not believe for one second that gas prices dictate the price of renewables. They don't. The price of renewables is set, and if they get more money than they deserve that day because the gas price is higher, they have to refund it. If they get less, they're given the money. And by the way, the gas price is hardly ever higher. The only time it was higher, of course, was in the Ukraine war when you saw that peak. Now, as many of you know, I'm a member of Advanced UK and I can tell you that their policy will be to re abstract all the fossil fuels we can reasonably economically extract in the UK, whether it be oil, gas or coal. So we're, we're not going to be scared about this. We're going to go for what's best for the British people. I have to put that in because that's the way I'm trying to bring about a change to our society um, to stop the madness we're now in. Well, there we are. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, the takeaway from it is this. We really do need a balanced energy mix in the UK um, using coal and gas and nuclear but for nuclear, we've got to do away with the regulations because at the moment it's four times the price of elsewhere like South Korea. So we've got to be sensible about that. But we need an energy mix like that. And coal is certainly viable. And where I come from in Wales, of course, it would do great benefit. And whilst my tables show that the um, domestic coal, which is mined deeper, is actually slightly more expensive than the imported coal, uh, nevertheless, 
Ne nevertheless, it actually probably got other benefits to the economy, the employment, the tax, and all, all of that uh, has to be considered. So all of these policies have to be considered holistically and how they ripple through the other effects, not just in the economy, but quality of life and other things. As an environmentalist, I'm very concerned about um, things like sulfates and things and any sort of detrimental fa uh, thing. But as you'll see from the paper when you read it below, I've looked at that. I've compared the emissions from the new coal plants on that. The only thing is the CO2. Well, that's well probably treble to quadruple the amount of CO2 than a gas plant. But that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. You know, we can make well, Welsh, valleys even, Welsh valleys even greener than they are now. Now, as you know, I don't do scripts for any of my videos. This is no exception. I try to talk to you as if I'm just talking to you across the table in a pub or something. I hope you understand this. Please ask any questions in the comments below. Please share the video. That's the most important thing. I don't make a cent out of these videos. Uh, I, I, in fact, you know, I subsidize my work. Uh, I, I don't ask you to pay me anything and so on. But read the paper if you want to get scientific and also, by the way, I've also put a link to a layman's version of the paper below this, which is like more plain English explaining all the maths and, and so on behind why I got the price of coal I got. Um, so there we are. I hope you've enjoyed it and thank you for watching.